Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And today I wanna to talk about Taplist IO, which is a digital tap list you can put right next to your taps, uh, wherever you have them in your house. I recently talked about this when I made a recent video talking about how to put taps on your drywall, but I wanted to make a video just dedicated to Taplist IO, as I don't really see a whole lot of videos talking about it and going through the setup. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. So Taplist IO is a digital instant beer menu. They uh, have paid options and they also have free options. Uh, the idea with this is that you can have a screen like a TV or a computer monitor or a tablet and you can display what's on tap on the current uh, taps you have um, for your home brewing. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about registration first. So the first thing we gotta do obviously is we have to create an account uh, and it's fairly simple. Uh, name your venue, put your password, select I'm a home brewer and continue. Um, once you're signed in, this is what it's gonna look like. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is we need to publish and select a plan. So if you look at the top right hand corner, you can click select a plan. You'll be confronted with this page. Uh, you'll have uh, three licensing options, hobby, pro, monthly, and then pro yearly. Um, and at the bottom, there is the free plan option. Uh, the free plan option gives you a URL to host your site. It allows you to, to connect one display to the subscription, and it supports up to four taps. If you need more than four taps, or you need more than one display, you might need to look at different licensing options, or you might have to create two free accounts and manage them separately. But, you, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be talking about the free plan here moving forward. Once your plan is selected, we can uh, talk about a few other things before we get started with setting up the display. Um, I do wanna talk about integrations they have with Taplist IO because I think these are pretty interesting. So you can inter integrate uh, with Brewfather, Brewer's Friend, Play-Doh Keg, and Tilt Hydrometer. If you're unfamiliar with Play-Doh Keg, uh, I have a page here, I pretty much show what it is. It's pretty much like a, uh, a, a scale. Um, so you could buy multiple of these, put them, uh, put your keg on top and it will monitor how many ounces are left in your keg. So it's pretty cool uh, and, and this will integrate with Taplist IO. If you have these already, then great. Um, if you want to buy them for it, it's great. It's about $130 per, per, per keg you have. It can also monitor CO2 as well. But essentially what it shows on the tap screen is, is when you pour it, it shows how many ounces you poured and how many ounces are left in the keg. It also integrates with tilt hydrometer as well. Um, so you can synchronize your specific gravity and uh, synchronize your temperature with it. Um, if you don't know what that is, this is a tilt hydrometer and thermometer. So um, that's you can use these. You pretty much throw these in the fermentation vessel, whatever you have in the fermenter, and it will track your um, how your fermentation is going, what the temperature is. Uh, so this also integrates with Taplist IO. We should also talk about supported hardware for Taplist IO. Um, so they have three options on their site. So they have the Amazon Fire TV, they have an Apple TV, and then they have a Raspberry Pi. Um, the most, probably the easiest option, and the option I'm using personally is the Amazon uh, way. So you can buy an Amazon Fire Stick with, for like $20 on Amazon. So they're pretty, pretty affordable. If you have any TV at home that you're not using, or if you want a dedicated TV for your tap list, you can get an Amazon Fire Stick and, and use it for Taplist IO. You can also use an Amazon Fire Tablet. Um, now the Fire Tablets obviously are more expensive. I think they go for around $110. Um, so I wouldn't go out and buy one just for this purpose, but if you have one laying around like I did, you can definitely repurpose a Amazon tablet. Apple TV is also an option. Uh, Apple TVs go for around $150, so I wouldn't recommend buying one of these for Taplist IO. But uh, if you have an Apple TV available at your house that you're not using, you can definitely dedicate this uh, for Taplist IO. Um, and the last option is Raspberry Pi. If you've never heard of a Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pi is like a little microcomputer that you can collect it, uh, connect the display up to. It is a uh, low cost Linux computer um, and they show the setup on how to set up your Raspberry Pi. So if you already have a Raspberry Pi at home or you're, uh, you're technically capable, um, you can also go this route as well uh, if you'd like. But I would recommend Amazon Fire TV. It's definitely the easiest option. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, set up a display after you uh, sign in and register an account to a license. Um, so how you do that is you use a pairing code. Uh, the pairing code is a six digit code you get by downloading the Taplist IO application. 
on your Amazon Fire tablet, your Amazon Fire uh, stick, or um, your Apple TV. So you're going to want to download the tap list IO, open it up, it will give you a pairing code. Um, you click here and then you enter in your pairing code. Once the pairing code is set up, you are all good to go. The next thing we want to do before we configure the display is I want to set some kegs up because it, it is a little easier to, uh, to work with configuring the display once you have the kegs already set up. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up our taps. So like I mentioned before, the free version allows you to configure up to four taps. Um, so we're going to add a fourth tap here. So we're going to create a tap. We're going to want to tap a keg. And since we don't have any kegs stored on the software, we want to create a new keg. There's going to be lots of options with kegging. Uh, so we're going to choose beer here. And for our, our example, we're going to choose IPA. For the producer, this needs to be filled out. So I would just put the name of your brewery or your name or however you want to do it. I'm just going to put my name for the example. For the type, we're going to leave it as beer, but you can change it if you'd like. For the style, let's say it's an American IPA. ABV, let's say it's 6%. Description can be whatever you'd like. I'm going to leave mine blank. You can also do original gravity, starting gravity, final gravity, SRM. Your SRM is the color of the beer based on your malts you choose to uh, use for the mash. We're going to say like SRM 6 and then your uh, IBU, which is your bitterness. Next, you can choose your illustration. I always just use this by, choose this by default. Um, the cool thing is about the image is that it will show, this will change based on the SRM. So if you have a lighter beer or darker beer based on what you choose in the advanced options, this will update to reflect that SRM, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and save. I'm gonna choose the keg size. It's a five gallon corny keg, it's pretty standard. So we're gonna go ahead and continue. Now you'll already notice that this looks a little different. Uh, these are glasses and this is a keg. You can change this by clicking on configure tap and you can show as glassware. Once you're all set, you can go back to the main page You can go to your menu. And then there you have your tap and then your keg on the tap. You can also, there's obviously a lot of options you can do here. Uh, I'm gonna show how to end this keg and then delete the tap, so if you'd like to do that in the future. Uh, once your IPA is empty, uh, you can click end this keg, end the keg, and you're back to your tap offline, in which you can go ahead and add a keg, create a new keg, and then the process repeats here. Um, you can also delete the tap as well. So like, let's say you just don't want to have anything on the display for that tap, so you can just hit delete tap and then you're back to three taps. I will tell you this, there seems to be a little bug, so you can't delete a tap if there's a keg attached to the tap. You need to end the keg before you delete the tap. That's one thing I've noticed. Once your taps and your beers are all set up, we can go ahead and talk about how to configure the display. If you go back to displays, you can click configure display, and remember, uh, it needs to be paired before um, this, this will allow you to configure anything. So make sure, if you haven't done so already, that you've paired your display with your Apple TV or your um, or your Amazon Fire tablet or your Amazon uh, Fire Stick. We're gonna go ahead and configure display. You have a bunch of options on the left-hand side here. So the TV name, you can just name it whatever, downstairs TV or brewery TV or whatever you'd like. You can do the orientation of landscape. Uh, some of these, depending on the theme you choose, might be stuck to portrait or you might be stuck to landscape. This, uh, this dense theme I chose uh, works for both, so I chose landscape. Um, and then you have themes like I previously mentioned. So once we're uh, in the themes menu, I'm using dense. So if you like my look, then use dense. Um, but they have all these different other options. They have grid, jumbo, big board. For like three or four taps, uh, the dense seems to work well for me. Once we're done with that, we can go to layout. So um, we have transitioning speed, your global sorting. So you can sort by like ABV and color. I like to sort by tap so it's a little easier for the uh, person uh, a new person going down to the taps to easily know which tap is what. Um, you can choose to have different columns. Uh, we only have one column here. You can zoom, so mine's set to 120, but it'll just make the, the font smaller or bigger. Um, you can do a layout order. You can do transition style, fade and fade out. What this is referring to is your taps per page. So let's say like I have one tap, a person could scroll between each page and that's taught that's what the transition style is talking about this is a little uh, cumbersome so I would try to have all the taps on one display if you can um, if you can swing it 
Next, we have the text option. So the what's on tap header, that's what this is up here. So you can change that to whatever you'd like. For options, this is gonna show what's on the screen. So I like to show the ABV, the SRM, and the IBU. I don't think these are selected by default. So you're gonna have to select these if you like that, or you can leave them removed. But there's a bunch of options here that you can choose from. Your font, if you like this font, this is the font I'm using, but I kind of just chose it. <laughs> uh, there's lots of different fonts you can choose here, and you can choose the colors of the fonts. Um, I just chose it white and left it by this font. You can also add a header image or a background image. Uh, I just left mine by default, so this is black and gray. Uh, it's pretty simple, but you can do this as well. I think a, a few of the header and a few of the background images are based on the subscription package you chose. Because remember, if you have a free subscription, you might not have a lot, you know, all the options available to you. Um, so just, you know, modify what you can and uh, go from there. If you hate what it looks like and you want to reset, you can just reset back to default. I've done that maybe two or three times when I was setting this up, so don't be afraid to reset the default and redo again. It's not going to delete the display. It's not going to delete uh, the taps or the beers. It's just going to delete the layout. So you can go ahead and do that if you'd like. Once you're done, you need to hit save. If you do not hit save, it will not save the display, and you'll have to come back and do this all over again. But that about covers it. I hope you guys thought this was uh, this was uh, helpful and useful. I obviously didn't go into uh, like the beverage database and the keg room and stuff like that and how to manage your account. But this is just a high level overview on how to use Tapless.io in your brewery. Um, you really only have to use this display and then this menu and you can get this kicked off in your own basement or your own brew house. Uh, but you can obviously play around with all these settings if you'd like, but you don't need to do anything other than what I just showed to get this up and running. Anyway, guys, if you haven't done so already, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.